Wherewith shall a young man redress his way, in taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee, let me not wander from thy commandments. I have hidden thy promise in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have had as great delight in the way of thy testimonies as in all manner of riches. I will meditate in thy commandments and consider thy ways. My delight shall be in thy statutes, and I will not forget thy words. Upon Sunday last past I declared unto you in sum the argument of this psalm, the use thereof and the instruction that we may gather by it, to wit that a faithful man is here taught to stir up himself to the reading of God's word, and thereby to confirm himself accordingly. David himself hath done this, who of all others was the most excellent. How much more, then, ought we to do the like? Even we, I say, which are so rude and ignorant, and far from so much profiting in the school of God as he. But because we are so cold, and have need to be spurred forward like asses, behold why David here showeth us, what profit and commodity we may receive by this continual study, if every of us will apply ourselves to see and hear that which God hath manifested unto us in his law and in the holy scriptures. As he here saith, Wherewith shall a young man redress his way, in taking heed thereto, or standing upon his guard, according to thy word, he showeth us here that if we be desirous to order our life as it becometh us, to have it rightly governed and to be pure and simple, we must hold that way which God hath set before us. For we must not trust unto our own wits, neither frame and fashion unto ourselves such a way as shall to us seem best, but to suffer God to rule and conduct us, and to obey him simply and plainly. To be short, David signifieth unto us that all the wisdom and perfection of our life is to follow God and cleave unto his will. True it is that this sentence at the first sight may seem to us too too uncommon, and as it were, more than needeth. For we will say, What is he that knoweth not this, and will not confess it? I will not deny, but that it is an ordinary thing to confess it. But in the meanwhile, how few are there which are persuaded of that which is here spoken, or if we imagine such a thing in our head, where is the practice of it? I fear me we shall find it in a very small number of us. Let us not, therefore, think that this rule which the Spirit of God hath set before us is in vain, for it is for the amendment of our life according to his word, and to make us to understand that without it all is but dung and filth that we have all erred, and that we hold no way, although we think all to the contrary. But we are to consider why he especially speaketh here of a young man, for we are sure that God hath given his law as well for the great as the small, for the old as the young, that when we shall begin to be taught it even from our youth, we must hold and continue it to the grave. Wherefore, then, doth David strain this doctrine of the law to young men? It is not for that it reacheth not unto the aged, but there are two reasons why he so spake. We know the hot affection that is in youth, and that there is such an heat in us, as that it seemeth it can no way be kept in. And because it is a hard matter to repress the hot and exceeding boiling affections of young men, David especially showeth that the word of God is the best remedy to repress the same. As if he should have said, It is very true that young men are reckless and do err, yea, like unto wild beasts, which cast no doubts, so hot and furious, as that it is almost impossible to bring them to any good pass, or yet to restrain them. For when we think to have surest hold on them, then are they farthest off. But if they shall be advised and counselled to be ordered and governed by God, no doubt of it they will be greatly daunted. And although their passions and affections do greatly exceed, 
yet shall a man see in them some modesty and a quiet and courteous behaviour. The mischief, then, is that young men will not be subject to God, for if they would, they should find a good means in his word, yea, and the same very sufficient to remedy all their vices. And it tendeth to this end, to declare unto us what virtue is in the word of God, even to suppress the most outrageous passions that may possibly be within us. And thus much for the first point. The second reason is that David, his meaning is chiefly to show unto the younger sort that they had great need to be held short, for otherwise they would exceed more and more in all mischief, for their nature is the rather more and more inclined to evil, because it hath little advice and small wisdom. His mind, therefore, is to advertise them of this necessity, because they should be more careful to bestow their study upon the word of God. And to be brief, his meaning is to advertise the whole world in general, that we ought betimes to enter into the school of God, if we will be taught according to his will. We know what Solomon saith in the book of Ecclesiastes, that we must not tarry until we come to old worn years, and then to remember God and think upon him but that we should begin so soon as God hath given us wit and discretion, and to continue it unto the end. Lo, here a doctrine which ought thoroughly to be marked of us, for we see from whence the springhead of all the excess and wantonness which do now reign, and have in all ages reigned in the world, cometh, because that God is not obeyed. For if that were so, we should have a bridle to keep us in awe and in good order, so that we would suffer ourselves to be ordered by the doctrine which is contained in the Holy Scripture. If we then would humble ourselves and be subject to God as to our Master, all things should be as well directed as we could possibly wish. But why do we not so? The world forsooth will not obey God as becometh it, neither will it be brought to this reason. Behold then the cause, why we see all things so confused as they are. So it is, that we are altogether inexcusable, seeing that our God so offereth himself unto us, and declareth unto us, that if we will follow his word, that all things shall go well with us, that our way shall be pure and clean, and that our life shall be true perfectness itself. And when God giveth such a testimony unto his law, all mouths must be stopped, and we must be cast down headlong, when as we know that we thus rebelled against our God, who is always ready truly to guide us. And thus much for this. Moreover, if our affections be so contrary that our lusts and affections be like wild beasts, that we cannot repress them, let us know that our God will give power and strength to his word, that we may be joined with him, if so be that we will direct ourselves to that mark. And to prove it to be so, he here speaketh especially of the corruptions of youth, which, as I have already declared, are more excessive and disordered than they are in the aged. But so it is that both great and small might very well be brought to this pass, to suppress their inordinate affections and lusts, if so be they would give that honour to God, which unto him appertaineth, that is, if they would follow his word. Furthermore, we are here to note the exhortation which we have already touched, to wit, that it is David his meaning to manifest unto us that we ought betimes to be God's scholars, and to suffer him to rule us, and to continue and hold us in this study all the days of our life. Let us not then tarry until we come to the grave's brink to become wise in this behalf, as we see these scorners which make themselves merry and outrage in mocking of God, saying, Well, sir, we shall have leisure to repent time enough, for if we may have but one hearty sigh, care away. Since then, this is most sure, that it is Satan which eggeth them thus grievously to abuse the patience of God. Let us beware that we be not so bewitched. But let us follow that which is here set down, to wit, that we may be God's scholars even from our youth. And above all things let us consider 
that young men have here a special lesson to learn, as before hath been touched. For David here declareth unto them, that they have a great deal more need to be restrained than any of the rest. It is very true that we are before God always, even as young children. Yea, I say that the elder sort, of greater experience, and such as appear grave and wise in the world, are without all doubt before the majesty of God very fools and idiots. We hear also what David confesseth of himself in another place, where he saith that he was like a calf, and a beast without reason or wisdom. And if it went so with him, with him I say, that was so excellent a prophet, what shall become of us? I say then that the elder sort ought greatly to profit in this school of God's wisdom. And yet this is no vain thing whereunto David here especially exhorteth the young men. And why so? For, as I have already said, this age is so without any consideration, as nothing can be more and is much subject to the temptations of Satan and of the flesh. And on the other side, over and besides that, there is neither judgment nor wisdom in the young men, insomuch that they are so stirred up with heat, as that their boiling affections break out. Yet instead of having some modesty, and to take in good part the admonitions which might be given them, they will be the more lofty and stubborn, which might take better occasion to be more grieved in being reprehended or rebuked. And that this is true, we see at this day, how all things are out of order. This is sure, that the true virtue which should be in youth is modesty, and that the younger sort ought to know that since they are not furnished with wisdom and discretion as the elder sort are, they ought to hear them and not to be given over to their own will and wit. This is the most principal wisdom that ought to be in young men. But what? They are at this day past all shame. By this we may see that the world is even as it were utterly desperate, and that we are grown to the fullness of all mischief and iniquity. For we shall see these beastly and graceless boys and wenches, which scarcely are able to wipe their own noses, as we say, yea, and that might yet be under the rod ten years, like peevish wretches as they are, that whensoever they shall be spoken unto, will make no reckoning of whatsoever is said, but pout and mow at it, counterfeiting the very apes and monkeys as daily we may see. And when we see such extreme pride in this people, what shall we say but that Satan hath even possessed them, and that they will show themselves as indeed they are, till we are without all amendment? so that this point is so much the more to be well considered of, when, as he saith, wherewithal shall a young man address his way, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. True it is that a great many which have need here to be told this gear, care not for filling of their ears with any such matter. They have knowledge enough to keep themselves from the church, for they have the thing which they desire when they may be at the tavern playing and dancing. But what? It is certain that this doctrine will not leave them uncondemned, when as God crieth unto them, as he witnesseth by Solomon, where he bringeth in wisdom, saying, I have cried out and put forth my voice in the streets, I have bidden both great and small, to the end that men might hear me, and none hath vouchsafed to receive me, nor yet give me lodging. When God declareth unto us that our life shall be well ordered, if we keep his word, Surely as many as fly from this doctrine and admonition shall render an account at the last day, because God hath called them. And also because they have not only been deaf, but also have added this mischief to fly from the admonitions which God's word admonished them of, to bring them again into the way of salvation, from which they were strayed. It is especially said, Yea, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. David, his meaning, is here to express unto us that we may make ourselves believe that we have wisdom and discretion enough, but yet it shall profit us no wit at all. Without we will be governed and ruled by God according to that which hath been before said. Now it followeth, With my whole heart have I sought thee, let me not wander from thy commandments. 
David here maketh a notable confession, which is not common to all men, that he hath sought God with his whole heart. For although we have a desire to go to God, yet it is so feeble as is lamentable, seeing we are withdrawn with so many vanities, by reason the world hath such dominion over us, and yet ought not to retire ourselves from any good devotion, when, as we have had a thorough feeling thereof. There are very few of us that are able to say with the prophet David that we have sought God with our whole heart, to wit with such integrity and pureness, that we have not turned away from that mark, as from the most principal thing of our salvation. It is very true that David had not yet any such perfection, but that he slacked in the fight against the prickings of the flesh and went back. St. Paul also confesseth that he went to God, as it were, halting, that he did not that good which he would and desired, but that he was encompassed with his natural vices to do the evil which he condemned. David was not without such temptations, but howsoever it was, it is most certain that the principal matter whereto he bent himself was to serve God. Now, as I have before said, we are all far from this example. For as many of us, as at this day, are best affected, may be lettered and hindered by a number of vices, vain cares of this world, and with lusts and desires of the flesh, that if we should remove our foot every day to go one pace forward, it were much, and yet it may come so to pass oftentimes, that we would draw back again to the place from whence we came. And yet, notwithstanding, David, after he had protested that he sought God with his whole heart, besought God that he would not suffer him to decline from his commandments. Hereby let us see what great need we have to call upon God. To the end he may hold us with a mighty strong hand. Yea, and although he hath already mightily put to his helping hand, and we also know that he hath bestowed upon us, great and manifold graces, yet is not this all. But there are so many vices and imperfections in our nature, and we so feeble and weak, as that we have very great need daily to pray unto him, yea, and that more and more, that he will not suffer us to decline from his commandments. For although David protested that he sought God with all his heart, nevertheless he addeth, Yet suffer me not, O Lord, to go wrong from thy commandments. What shall we do then? Let us also learn to walk carefully, for since he is the God which giveth us that good mind to will, and that also giveth us the power to perform, and all of his mere favour and grace, we ought, saith St. Paul, to walk in fear, and to keep good watch to the end that Satan taketh not us unprovided, and that he enter not within us. And lo, what is the cause, that we have seen some men which have made a great show of holiness for a time, and have seemed to be more like angels than men, which at length have grown to outrage, and have so greatly exceeded their bounds, as that God even forsook them like desperate men. And whence then proceeded this? Verily, from their own security and negligence, because they thought themselves to be very perfect. But Paul is clean contrary to this, for thus he saith, I have not attained as yet to that full perfection. Nevertheless, I have done what in me lieth. When he saith, I have done what in me lieth, he declareth that there was that humility in him whereof he spake in the place before by me already alleged, and this humility importeth that we should call upon God as David did, as he showeth unto us here in this place. It followeth, I have hid thy promise within my heart, that I might not sin against thee. When David speaketh after this manner, I have hid thy word or promise in mine heart, he well declareth that if we have but only a wandering knowledge, that the same will not hold us in, but that the devil hath by and by won upon us to oppress us with temptations, and in the end to cast us down headlong. What must we then do? It is not enough that we have been at church, and heard what hath been there said unto us, and that every of us hath mumbled up unto himself some one thing or another, but the word of God must be settled in us, and be hid in our heart, 
to it that it may there be resident and continually abiding and to have received it with such an affection as that it be as it were imprinted in us if this be not so sin will reign in us for it hath by nature his habitation with us for all our senses are wicked and corrupt all our wills and desires are enemies unto god unless god's word be well hidden in our hearts moreover we are to understand that david here vaunted not himself of his own power and strength as though he were in admiration thereof but the spirit of god speaking by his mouth intendeth to give us a glass wherein we may be confirmed to wit that 